Earth's diverse continents. Home to millions of species of animals who clash in nature's savage battles of survival. But what happens when these terrestrial titans turn against each other? Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. From the plains of Africa to the ice of the Arctic, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. On the African savanna, the fight for life is brutal and relentless. In this blood-soaked arena, two gladiators stand out from the competition. In one corner, weighing in at around 550 pounds, the lion is pure swagger, with the chops to back it up. Running at up to 50 miles per hour, it uses brute force and a set of razor-sharp claws to take down any animal that whets its appetite. In the other corner, weighing up to a staggering 2,200 pounds, the Nile crocodile is a deadly armored assassin. A ruthless predator who uses one of the most forceful bites on Earth to drag animals as big as a wildebeest to a grim underwater death. But when these two super predators face off, all bets are off. The banks of the Mara River, Kenya. A pack of crocs feast on a dead hippo. A pride of hungry lions approach. At 3,000 pounds, a hippo is a big prize. This lion is determined to steal some. He swipes with his deadly claws and signals his intentions with an ear-shattering roar. The lion's larynx is set far back in his throat. Where most other animals have a bone, he has an elastic ligament that stretches to eight inches, creating a wide air passage that amplifies his roar to 114 decibels. As loud as a jet engine taking off, it can be heard five miles away. It would scare off a lesser opponent, but it'll take more than that to impress a Nile crocodile. Because the Nile croc has a killer weapon, a powerful set of jaws. He has seven jaw muscles. Just one is for opening. The other six are dedicated to clamping shut, creating a bite force of almost 3,000 pounds. You'd need a hydraulic press to pry them open. But the pride has a strategy. The male lions work as bodyguards while the lioness moves in to feed. She knows not to venture too close to the crocs. Instead, she stays shoreside and uses her sharp back teeth like scissors to shear flesh off the dead hippo's leg. But the male lions decide they want the whole feast and the situation escalates. One and a half inch claws are as sharp as a knife and can easily slice most animal skin and muscle. But the croc has armor, a geometric arrangement of scales that allows him free movement and protection at the same time. The lioness puts it to the test. But his armor holds. 
He bites. But her reflexes are too fast. The crocs won't back down. But neither will the lions. So they both settle in for dinner with a side dish of danger. Tooth versus claw is nothing compared to the biggest fight of all. With trunks, killer tusks, and 10 tons of savanna combat. Standing up to 13 feet tall, elephants are the strongest animals to walk the earth easily pushing over anything that gets in their way. No other animal could dream of taking on a grown elephant, apart from another elephant. These behemoths need to quench their thirst every three days. But out here in the Kalahari Desert, water is scarce. So when a precious life-giving pool is discovered, elephants from over a hundred miles around descend. Elephants are social animals, but their social hierarchy is in flux. The adult males must fight for dominance and mating rights. Fights can be epic, ending with one of the contenders dead. This is the Big Daddy. He's 27 years old and used to getting his way. But his challenger is defiant and itching for a fight. Big Daddy is the first to attack. He tests the challenger's strength. The name of the game is to push your opponent over using one of the most formidable weapons in the animal kingdom. Big Daddy's trunk is a fusion of his upper lip and nose, containing around 100,000 different muscles. This makes it maneuverable and strong, a lethal combination like no other. The challenger uses his to try to force Big Daddy down. But here in the water, neither side can land a decisive blow. Time to take the fight onto solid ground. Big Daddy tries to spear his opponent with his killer weapon, tusks. His tusks are actually long teeth made from dentine with an enamel coating that makes them incredibly hard. They're so strong, they can pierce hide that's up to one inch thick. The challenger strikes back with his tusks to force Big Daddy's head down. Just like humans are left or right-handed, elephants have a dominant tusk. He twists to take advantage of his. He tries to jump to get more height on Big Daddy. But the move backfires. Big Daddy now has leverage under the challenger's trunk. His tusks are dangerously close to the challenger's underside. The challenger's chest and ribcage is where he's most vulnerable. If Big Daddy's tusk pierces here, it could hit the challenger's airways, lungs, or heart, leaving him mortally injured. The challenger knows he's in trouble and turns to disengage. But it's a critical error, and Big Daddy presses home his advantage. 
It's a winning move. A humiliated challenger flees. Leaving Big Daddy as king of the watering hole. When it comes to combat, big isn't always best. These creatures are so ferocious, they'll fight to the death. Battling on, even after they've been decapitated. In Africa, even the smallest animals have to fight for their right to survive. As ant colonies grow, they need more and more food. The fastest way to secure it is a violent takeover of their neighbor's land. With two armies, both more than 10,000 strong, this battle will have a high body count. Any ant warrior that takes the field may not make it home alive. The inch-long soldiers lead the attack. They send out pheromones for others to join them. African ants have a heart-shaped head equipped with their major weapon, the mandibles. Ant mandibles are curved with a jagged edge like a saw. They're made of chitin, the same as their exoskeleton, but are reinforced with proteins that make them even stronger to cut through the bodies of their enemies. Using their mandibles, the ants lock together with all their might. Their goal, rip off their rival's limbs and target the vulnerable area between the head and chest. And they work together to take out their opposition. The ant on the right uses her mandibles to hold her opponent down, while the ant on the left tries to saw her head off. These are one of Animal Fight Night's ultimate contenders. Because even if they do succeed in severing a rival's body part, just like in a zombie movie, the incomplete body can keep on fighting. This ant is fighting against a head and an arm that has been severed from its body. Ants have a simple nervous system. Their basic movements are controlled by bundles of nerves called ganglia spread out along their bodies. When an ant loses a head or other body part, the ganglia continue to generate movement. This disembodied head can fight on for hours or until its body fluid runs out. The fight won't be over until every last ounce of energy has been spent. as the battlefield becomes littered with the dying body parts of the defenders. It becomes clear the invaders have won a grisly victory. Their territory and food supply has just gotten a whole lot bigger. You may sometimes think males have only one thing on their mind. And for red deer stags during the rut or breeding season, you'd be absolutely right. Red deer stags spend so much energy chasing girls that at the end of the rut, they can drop down dead with exhaustion. Most of that energy is used up fighting off the competition. This Casanova is seven years old. Four and a half feet tall, and weighing up to 418 pounds. He's at his peak reproductive fitness. Casanova's got himself a harem of female deer. Now, all he has to do is hold on to them. This is his love rival, 
pumped full of testosterone and ready to fight. He calls out a challenge. Casanova replies. He won't give up his females without a fight. The prize is the right to the bloodline. But stag fights can end in injury and death, so both fighters risk losing it all. Both warriors deploy their key offensive weapon, their antlers, driving them into their opponent using all of their body weight. The strategy is lock, push, then twist, trying to throw your opponent off balance and turn his body so you can gore him with the sharp points. Antlers are made of bone. Stags strip the minerals from their own skeleton so they can grow them up to 39 inches long. Flexible and tough, they can be used to inflict deep wounds, put out an eye, and even kill by puncturing an opponent's skull. But they've got to get past their rival's antlers first. Shaped like a catcher's mitt, they're as good defensively as they are offensively. The challenger tries to get the advantage by twisting his antlers from below. But he's thrown off balance. He rallies quickly enough to avoid being gored and tries again. He drives Casanova back. The tips of his antlers are desperately close to Casanova's vulnerable eyes. And his skull. Way too close for Casanova's liking. Keep fighting, and he risks death. So he chooses life. And his love rival claims his harem at least until the next challenger stakes his claim. In the Arctic, the polar bear is the resident kingpin. He can walk for days in this snowbound wilderness without meeting another living being, which suits him just fine. It's when he meets another polar bear that the problems start. With female polar bears only having cubs once every two or three years, there are many more males than available females, and the competition for the right to breed is cutthroat. So male polar bears have evolved to be warriors. Up to 10 feet tall and weighing 1,500 pounds, they're double the size of the females and have bigger weapons, too. Fights often end in both animals being bloodied and maimed. So when two male polar bears meet, the results can be brutal. The frozen Arctic, nature at its most beautiful and its most merciless. Two of the largest land carnivores on Earth clash over the rights to the bloodline. On the right, at 10 years of age, this bear is older and battle-scarred. But on the left, the eight-year-old Junior has seen his share of fighting, too, with the missing chunks of fur to prove it. Polar bears fight like sumo wrestlers, pushing their opponents to try to get them off balance and send them crashing to the ground. The older bear launches a volley of powerful attacks on his younger opponent. His forelimbs are designed for strength. The muscles attach to the bones further away from the pivoting joints than they do in other animals, producing more leverage, giving him a more powerful punch than a grizzly bear. 
The older bear uses his hind limb muscles to launch his entire 1,500 pound body down on his opponent. That's like having two vending machines dropped on your head. But the young challenger is tough. He battles to get his paws on top, to dominate his opponent. The challenger has five curved two-inch claws on each paw. Sharp and strong enough to cut through ice, they can inflict serious damage on another bear. Then, Junior brings out his best weapon, his teeth. He aims for the older bear's exposed neck. The challenger has 42 teeth including four canines up to two inches long. Their length means he can sink them deep into his opponent before clamping down with a force of almost 500 pounds. But the veteran's got a deadly set of teeth too. He bites back, getting a hold on the challenger's neck. And when his attacks become relentless, the challenger cuts his losses. He doesn't want any more chunks taken out of his neck today. When you think of animal action heroes, a gecko might not be the first thing that springs to mind. He may only be a few inches long, but he can scale a sheer rock face, shed his skin to get out of a tight corner, and make himself almost totally invisible. This is a three-year-old Wahlberg's Velvet Gecko. He's locked in mortal combat with a five-year-old Western Natal Green Snake. It grows up to 51 inches long, 11 times the gecko's size. The snake wants to eat him. But this action hero's determined he won't be on the menu today. The gecko is a seasoned warrior. He's already lost his tail in a previous battle. In this fight, he has a bold but simple strategy. Bite and hold the snake's jaw. That way, his opponent can't eat him. It's a risky tactic. The snake's strategy is to bite the gecko repeatedly, delivering a venom that will cause the gecko to hemorrhage blood until he's so exhausted, the snake can devour him whole. Although the gecko's hold prevents the snake eating him, he can still bite and deliver venom. But the gecko has a defense. He can close off the blood supply to his broken skin. And here on this log, he can bring another skill into play. Adhesive feet. Up to 100 million grippers on each foot generate around four and a half pounds of sticking force, meaning he can cling to the log even though the snake is pulling against him with all his power. But the gecko's jaw can't hold forever. He gets the upper hand again, but the snake bites have cut so deep his constricting blood vessels are useless. The snake goes for the gecko's back and sides, but he can't get a hold. The gecko's strategy of biting and holding on for all he's worth is working again. And the snake's had enough. The geckos put up too tough a fight. He enjoys victory, and none too soon. When geckos fight, their oxygen needs far outstrip supply, and lactic acid builds up in their bodies. This fight has been the equivalent of running a marathon. At least he's alive. 
But then, the snake changes his mind. Real life isn't like the movies. The hero doesn't always win. And the snake gets his reward. He devours his dinner whole. Life and death battles don't just happen on land. Down here, they involve teeth, venom, and one very big mouth. The Pacific Coast, California. A paradise of sun, sand, and surf. But beneath the waves, it's a battleground because this stretch of sunny California is home to the most argumentative fish in the sea. The sarcastic fringe head. A foot long fish with attitude. Home can be anything from a crack in a rock to an old tin can. For this old man of the sea, it's an abandoned shell. A sarcastic fringe head's home is his castle. Become homeless and he'll be vulnerable to predators and struggle to find food to eat. He'll defend it with all he's got. So when an octopus crosses his land looking for food, an underwater showdown is inevitable. The fringe head goes on the attack. His weapon, a mouth that flares wide to reveal 75 razor sharp teeth. His goal, sink those deadly little knives into the octopus's soft flesh. But that won't be easy. This octopus is young, but already battle-scarred. With a short stump where one of his arms should be. Perhaps he's met a sarcastic fringe head before. His remaining arms are up to twice as long as his opponent, so he packs a serious punch. Each arm has two or three hundred suckers. If he catches the fish, he can use these to pull it to his sharp beak where he'll deliver a dose of poison so deadly, a single drop can paralyze a small fish. But the old man is agile. A flexible body and large bendy fins mean he's built for swimming in quick bursts and can change direction in an instant. In this fight, speed and unpredictability are an advantage. The octopus lands a couple of punches, and while he's got some breathing room, takes the chance to escape. The old man gets in one last vicious attack as he retreats, just to make sure the intruder never darkens his door again. The sarcastic fringe head gets his prize. Lunch and a peaceful home. Across the world, animals fight to get enough food to survive. And on the African savanna, everybody else's lunch is fair game. Wild dogs weigh up to 79 pounds and can reach a top speed of 37 miles per hour. At least 70% of their hunts end in a kill. And pound for pound, they eat more than any other carnivore. Weighing in at up to 176 pounds, 
A hyena can hear the sound of a kill up to six miles away and smell it from two and a half. It will take on a pride of lions if it thinks there's food to be had. In Kruger National Park, a pack of wild dogs devour an impala. At well over 100 pounds, it will keep the whole pack going for a day. But sure enough, it's not long before competition arrives. Two hyenas want a piece of the action. But the dogs won't give up their kill without a fight. And with both animals able to kill each other, this fight could end with dead prey and predator. Kruger National Park, South Africa. Two hyenas fight with eight wild dogs over a dead impala. The hyenas are twice the dog's size. But the dogs work as a pack, using a range of sounds, including these twitters, to talk to each other. They use their collective muscle to back their bigger opponents into a corner. then spread out and surround them. The hyenas lower their hindquarters to protect their most important assets, their genitalia. It's a defensive posture, but they've got an offensive weapon that could be a game changer. A bite that's designed to crush bone. This hyena has three sets of jaw muscles, powering 34 short, broad teeth that are set far back to maximize their crushing power. His bite can exert a pressure of over 21,000 pounds per square inch, more than a leopard or brown bear, and enough to kill a wild dog in a single bite without even breaking its skin. But the dogs have a vicious bite too, and the power of the pack. Working together, they keep the hyenas contained. Their success as hunters is because they cooperate like this. Deciding the hyenas are no longer a threat, they retire for lunch. But one of the hyenas just won't give up, and the pack signal they're not going to let it go. So round two is on. Hyenas have a strong bite, but pound for pound, the wild dogs is even stronger. And because hyenas are so reliant on their sense of smell to scavenge, her nose is packed with millions of nerve endings. So that bite has got to hurt. Writhing in pain, she's now also vulnerable to the rest of the pack. When she finally twists free, she can't go on. She limps away. The dogs, half her size, get back to their well-earned feast. Wherever in the world there is overpopulation, competition is ferocious. And if you're a Hanuman Langer monkey, you'll use jaws, hands, and gang muscle to win. On the outskirts of Jodhpur in Rajasthan, monkey troops live by scavenging food discarded by the local people. But with numbers growing all the time, rival gangs battle for control of the territory and its food. These newcomers want to take this territory by force from the residents, an alpha male and his troop of wives and babies. Lose this battle, and the residents will struggle to find enough food to keep themselves and their babies alive. So they have everything to fight for. 
The battle starts with the newcomers provoking the residents in a deadly game of tag. Then the invading alpha male takes to the field. Weighing up to 40 pounds, Hanuman Langer males are larger than females. And their weapons are bigger too. Nearly one inch long canines can bite through an infant monkey's skull. The alpha male is claiming the land for the newcomers. The females form the front line of the resident's defense. They have the home advantage. The fight escalates into all-out warfare. The newcomers attack, but the residents know the terrain and are a finely tuned team. They rush at the invaders. Their strategy is to cut off individuals and overwhelm them. To feed their children, they even have to take on the alpha male. It's high risk, but these mothers are on a life or death mission. The alpha male may be bigger, but he and his gang aren't fighting as a coordinated unit. Working together, the residents break through enemy lines. Teamwork wins the day. And they drive the newcomers off their turf. But as the monkey populations grow, the competition for food will only get more ruthless. When terrible danger lurks in every shadow, it takes speed, agility, and the fighting skills of a martial arts master just to make it through the night. In the Omani Desert, Middle East, temperatures can reach 120 degrees, and food sources are few and far between. The Jurd calls this place home. At nearly a foot long from nose to tail, and weighing just two ounces, he's well adapted to life in the hot spot. His keen sense of smell and acute hearing means he can search for food in the cool of the night. This jured hunter has a family to feed. More than four feet underground, his mate is keeping watch over a sleeping brood of five babies. It takes four weeks for them to be able to fend for themselves. Around a quarter of jured babies don't make it. This daddy must brave the dangers of the desert night to keep them alive. And he'll take on anyone that stands in his way, even a deadly horned viper. He uses his speed and agility to twist himself free from the viper's venomous fangs. But that's not the greatest threat the daddy faces tonight. He's gathering seeds in the shadows when he senses danger lurking. His opponent is another jurd, come to steal food from the mouths of his children. A wounded jurd could struggle to survive, so both fighters give it their all. The father uses the long bones and large muscles of his hind legs to get leverage under his rival. The intruder bites the father's tail. His sharp teeth could inflict so much damage, it drops off. But the escape artist strikes again. Like Sholin fighters, they clash in midair. Jurds can jump more than two and a half times their body length. That's like a six foot man jumping 15 feet from a standing start. A Wushu-style kick sends the father flying, but this acrobat lands square on his feet, 
A perfect 10. He regroups and uses all his strength to pin the intruder down with a bone-crunching pile driver. His opponent knows when he's beaten. He's had enough and cowers under a twig. The acrobatic escape artist has put his rival in his place and kept food on his family's table. Yellowstone National Park. Hunting ground for the baddest animal fighters in North America. And arena for one of the bloodiest long-running battles on the continent. The bison is the biggest mammal on American soil. Up to six feet tall, weighing a cool one ton. Bison bulls are fierce warriors, using violent showdowns to decide who has the right to breed. But for the female of the species, the fight to secure the bloodline is a matter of life or death. Bison calves have only a 50-50 chance of surviving their first year. Their mothers will use any force necessary to keep them alive. One of the bison's deadliest enemies is the gray wolf. What the wolf lacks in size, it makes up for in speed and strategy, working together in packs to bring down opponents 10 times its size. So when a pack of wolves meets a lone mama bison and her calf, lives are on the line. The pursuit is on. The bison's outnumbered six to one. Surrounded, she keeps her calf underneath her, using her vast size to protect it from the circling wolves. A wolf's number one weapon is his teeth. He has 42 cutting blades that can strip the flesh from a young bison calf in minutes. And a bite pressure of 1,500 pounds per square inch. Enough to crush a bison calf's skull. But Mama Bison has a mega weapon too. Legs that are built to kill. Her thigh muscles help power a kick of nearly 4,000 pounds in force. At the end of each leg, she has a five inch wide hoof, a toe covered with a hard layer of keratin. These missiles are so deadly, they can kill a wolf with a single blow. But this wolf seems to have nine lives. The wolves have numbers on their side. Their strategy is to try to distract the mother by harassing her, leaving her calf vulnerable to being picked off by one or two hunters. When the wolf grabs her baby, it looks like all is lost for mom. But with the cavalry here, two lethal hind legs are now 10. And for the wolves, consummate players of the numbers game, they know the balance of the fight has turned against them. Mom claims victory. She's kept her baby alive for one more day.